Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I'm your host, Isaac Longworth, and last week I was in a nearby city in the downtown area having evangelization conversations with people, reaching out to people and talking with them about God, about life. And I had this really interesting conversation with this young guy, this young man who was living a very uh, immoral, a very selfish life. I don't want to get all into the details of what he was into, but he was not really aware of just how wrong his lifestyle and, and the choices he was making were. He was actually quite proud of it. He was, he was arrogant about it. He was bragging about it to me and, and, and mocking me and trying to show off just how disordered his living was, even though he didn't realize it at the time. And I was trying to share with him the truth about what God teaches about how we're supposed to live our life. And I was trying to show him that the lifestyle he was living was actually posing a, a great danger to his soul, that in the eyes of God, he needed repentance. He needed to be forgiven of all of this stuff and to leave it behind. And at one point in the conversation, when he didn't really have many arguments left to give me, he just told me, well, I feel like you've got your opinion and I've got my opinion. I mean, maybe you've heard something similar to that. In our society today, there is so much of an emphasis on my truth and your truth and your opinion and my opinion, and, and we all can just get along even though we all believe different things. And this man was very much trapped in that. He didn't even know if there was such a thing as truth. He was very confused. He was very lost. In this world with all these different opinions about how you are supposed to live your life, he didn't even know what truth was. And he's not alone. That's the state of many people today. And our saint today actually had to go through something very similar. For most of his life, he was on a quest for truth, looking for the meaning of life, looking for the answers to the deep questions that all of us wonder deep down. And he was not at peace until he found those answers. And that saint is Saint Justin Martyr. Justin was born uh, around the year 100 AD, so only about 70 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, so very early on in the life of the church. Justin was born in the region of Samaria, which at the time was part of the Roman Empire. Now, if you've read the Bible, you'll know that Samaria is where the Samaritans lived. They're famous in the Bible. They, the Samaritans were actually hated by the Jews and the Samaritans hated the Jews in, in return. They didn't like each other because the Samaritans were formerly Jewish people who had intermarried with pagan tribes who had come into the region. Now, Justin's family fell into that category. They themselves were pagan. They worshipped all the different gods of the Roman Empire, of war, of the ocean, of, of the underworld, and they would offer sacrifices to them and worship them as the rest of the Roman Empire did. Now, Justin's parents were quite wealthy and they spared no expense for the education of their son. They sent him to the best schools known in the empire. And Justin was very intelligent. He did well at school, very bright, and uh, his teachers really enjoyed having him as a student. And his favorite course to study was philosophy. Now, philosophy is literally means the love of wisdom, and it's the study of asking what is really true. It's, it's a course that asks the deep questions and tries to answer some of the things that humans have wondered about since the very beginning. And so as a teenager and as a young man, Justin loved philosophy. He was passionate about finding the truth about reality, how he was supposed to interact with the world. And he wanted to know what he was supposed to believe. He wanted to know what the meaning of life was. He wanted to know if religion was true? And if so, which one was he supposed to follow? Which God was he supposed to worship? And one of his first teachers introduced him to the philosophy of Stoicism. Stoicism uh, sought to present a true path to living a good life, the right way to think. And Stoicism basically taught that if you are able to endure pain and hardship in your life without displaying uh, feeling, without complaining, then you can train yourself not to care what happens to you and you can endure good things and bad things alike without getting too excited. And then 
when you've arrived at that stage, you're able to live in true peace. So Justin studied under him for a while, but eventually Justin decided that Stoicism wasn't the answer because when he asked his teacher questions about the nature of God, whether God existed or not, Justin found that his arguments were unconvincing. And so he determined that Stoicism was not completely true and thus was not the truly wise way to live. Well, then Justin studied the philosophy of Aristotle, a very famous philosopher who believed that wisdom could be found from studying our experience of the real world, discovering the nature of things in themselves. And so Justin learned a lot about science, a lot about reality from the school, but in the end, he didn't find out the answer to deeper questions about spirituality, God, and questions like, why are we here? Aristotle's philosophy couldn't answer those questions of his heart. And so he moved on to studying the teachings of the philosopher Plato. And Plato taught that all that we see here on earth are like imperfect copies of these immaterial, perfect blueprints in the spiritual world that Plato called the forms. And Justin actually really enjoyed learning about this philosophy. He thought that this philosophy, out of all of the ones he had studied so far, made the most sense. But he still wasn't convinced that this was the fullness of truth. And one of the things that consistently turned him off from all of these different teachers of philosophy is that they all demanded fees. They demanded money to teach their students wisdom. And so Justin was already suspicious of their motives because for them, it was a job, a job to teach students this. And so one day while he was walking along the beach, thinking about all these things and wondering what the purpose of his life was and, and how he was to find true wisdom if there was a God and whether this God could be known, he met an old man who was also on the beach. Now, this old man happened to be a Christian and the two of them struck up a conversation and Justin told him about his frustration with all of these different teachers and philosophies that he had been studying over the years. And how none of their worldviews, none of their teachings really, truly satisfied his search for the truth. And the old man affirmed him for searching for the truth. He was like, Justin, this is so good that you're, you're trying to find the truth. But the old man told him that none of these worldly philosophers had the fully true answer. They had parts of the truth, but they didn't have the fullness of it. And so they couldn't help him answer those deep questions. And so then the man began to tell him about the one true God. And Justin listened very closely as this man told him that there was not many different gods as he had grown up believing from his parents, but that there was one God who had first spoken to the Jewish people and their prophets throughout all of history, and that he had eventually sent his own son Jesus to come into the world to show all people the true way to God. And Justin learned from this man that the Jesus who Christians worshipped as the Son of God had fulfilled all of these prophecies that had been made thousands of years before his birth. And by fulfilling these prophecies, Jesus had proved that God really had spoken to his people for centuries, that he had been preparing the world for this final revealing of Jesus, who was God, became man, God who had entered into our world in fulfillment of all the prophecies that had come before him. And Justin listened intently as the old man shared about his faith. And in their conversation, Justin began to realize that this was the truth that he had been looking for his whole life. And the Christian man encouraged him at the end of the conversation. He said, keep researching Christianity, keep looking into it, keep searching for truth. And Justin promised that he would. But the old man's final words of advice to Justin, and these are actual words that Justin wrote down later when he was remembering this conversation. The old man cautioned him, but pray that above all things, the gates of light may be open to you. For these things, talking about all these, these mysteries of truth, he said, these things cannot be perceived or understood by everyone, but only by the man to whom God and his Christ have given wisdom. 
So the old man was saying, look, you can do all the studies, all the research you want, but if you're not asking God for him to share his light with you, you're never going to find truth. Ask God for his grace to be able to see the answers to all the questions you've been asking. And so Justin took him up on his word. He returned home with a lot to think about. Justin knew about Judaism because he had grown up in Samaria, very close to where the Jewish people lived, but he had never really searched the Jewish scriptures in order to read the prophecies that foretold the arrival and life of Jesus. And he began to read and he was amazed at the prophecies that he saw. He read in Isaiah chapter 7, 14, which was 700 years before Jesus was born about how Jesus would be conceived. When Isaiah wrote, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son which is a very strange prophecy to make if you think about it. How many virgins do you know who have been able to conceive a son? And yet Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling that prophecy 700 years before his birth. From the prophet Micah, 700 years before Jesus again, in chapter 5, verse 2, Justin read, But you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth one who is to be a ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. And Jesus fulfilled this prophecy because he is God who has always been. His origin truly is from of old, from ancient of days. And he was born in the city of Bethlehem. And he is the true king and the ruler of Israel. Justin read of the prophet Zechariah who lived 500 years before Jesus, who prophesied about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem when he wrote, Look, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. And this is, this is a bizarre prophecy because kings didn't ride on donkeys. They rode on, on great war horses. And yet the prophet Zechariah, 500 years before Jesus, promises Jerusalem that your king will come to you on a donkey. And years later, Jesus, when he enters into Jerusalem before his death and resurrection, enters into the streets of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey as people line the streets to call out his praise. And then, Justin read in Psalm 22, written by King David a thousand years before Jesus came, describing what Jesus' crucifixion would look like. When David wrote, a company of evildoers encircle me. Like lions, they have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. They stare and and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this, of course, describes how Jesus died. That he was pierced in his hands and his feet when he was crucified and lifted up. And a circle of those who had killed him gathered around his cross and mocked him and cast lots, gambled. For his clothing. And so as Justin was reading all of these prophecies, made hundreds and sometimes even thousands of years before Jesus came, he was convinced of the truth of Christianity. Justin later wrote, Straight away a flame was kindled in my soul, and a love of the prophets, and of those men who were friends of Christ, possessed me. And while revolving his words in my mind, speaking about his conversation with that old man on the beach, I found this philosophy alone, to be safe. He realized that Christianity was true. And it was the truth that he had been searching for his whole life. Now, of course, this realization was amazing because he had found what he is looking for. But it was also terrifying for him because Christianity at that point in history in the Roman Empire was illegal. You could be fined, you could be imprisoned, you could be tortured, you could even be killed just for professing faith in Jesus. And Justin actually, before he had investigated Christianity, he had seen the suffering of Christians who were being persecuted for their faith. And even back then as a non-believer, he had written, hearing the accusations made against Christians and seeing them fearless in the face of death and of all that men fear, I said to myself that it was impossible that they should be living in evil. So even as a non-believer, he was impressed by the lifestyle of Christians, of their fearlessness, of their boldness. And so Justin was doubly convinced of Christianity. He was convinced that Jesus was truly the son of God 
who had true teachings and was backed up by centuries of fulfilled prophecy. And he was convinced by the fact that his followers lived lives of such courage and virtue that it proved the truth of what they based their lives on. And so in his 30s, Justin was baptized and became a Christian. He left behind his former beliefs in order to put his faith in Jesus. And because he had spent so much time studying the truth, researching all these different worldviews and religions and philosophies before finding Christianity, Justin actually became a very passionate defender and a very knowledgeable defender of Christianity to anyone who would listen to him because he knew the arguments so well. Now, one of his most famous examples of this is his conversation, which we still have recorded today, with a famous Jewish scholar, a friend of Justin's, named Trifo. And Justin pointed out to his Jewish friend that Judaism is incomplete without the promised Messiah, the promised anointed one who the Jews had been waiting for for centuries and are still waiting for today. And Justin showed his friend Trifo that Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies that had been made about what the Messiah would look like, what he would do, and that they had actually missed the arrival of their Messiah, that they had missed Jesus when he had come into their midst. But Justin was quick to assure them it's not too late, that you could believe in Jesus today, that you could recognize him as the Messiah that you had been longing for, and that you could be saved by faith and baptism into his church. And Justin defended Christianity, not just uh, in the face of Judaism, but also in the midst of a persecution from the pagan empire. Now, in the empire, Christians were often um, accused of being criminals. They were accused of the crime of atheism because they denied the official gods of Rome. They didn't believe in the gods of Rome, and so that was the crime that they could be punished under. And so Justin admitted in his writings, he wrote, we are called atheists and we confess that we are atheists so far as gods of this sort are concerned, but not with respect to the most true God. Well, Justin readily admitted, okay, if you're considering us atheists because we don't believe in your many gods, sure, call us atheists, but we are not atheists because we believe in the one true God, the only God who is worthy of belief. And Christians were also being accused of being criminals who lived horrible, degenerate lives. And Justin pointed out in his writings to anyone who would listen that actually Christians lived better lives than their pagan neighbors, that Christians were loyal to the emperor, that they were good citizens, good Romans, and that they were being unjustly killed for no real crime. And he said, look, the, the pagans expose their children, which was a practice back then. If, if the father and mother didn't want to raise their child or there was some imperfection in their child, they had the right to expose them, which was basically to leave them outside to die or to be picked up by people to be sold into human trafficking. It was a terrible practice, but very common in the Roman Empire. Well, Christians refused to do this with their children. And they actually took in these abandoned children. They would search the streets and take in these babies in order to save them from death and the horrible fate of human trafficking that faced them if they survived. And Justin also showed that in the midst of a culture in the Roman Empire that was filled with impurity, it was a culture where adultery and promiscuity were common, where, where orgies and homosexuality and even pederasty were welcomed and celebrated. He said the Christians live differently. They live lives of purity within their families as a witness and a testament to the truth of what Jesus has taught us about sexuality, about our morality. And so Justin used all of these different proofs that had convinced him originally of the truth of Christianity in order to convince others to become Christian. And Jews and pagans alike were won over to faith in Jesus when they heard Justin's clear and passionate arguments for the truth that he had found. But eventually, because he was so bold in proclaiming Christianity, he, he couldn't escape the persecution. He was arrested and accused of the crime of being a Christian because he wasn't hiding his faith. He was very vocal about his defense of the church. And so he was arrested and put on trial. 
And we actually, to this day, still have the court documents from the trial with the actual words spoken by Justin back and forth between him and the judge when he was defending himself in court. And so Justin and other Christians were brought in to be questioned by an official of the Roman Empire named Rusticus. Rusticus was the one who was in charge of hearing this court case and of sentencing them if they were found guilty of being Christians. And so first Rusticus asked Justin, what doctrines do you believe in? And Justin answered him boldly. He told him about Jesus, who was the son of God. He told how this son of God was the Messiah promised to the Jewish people who had been foretold, who would be the savior of the world. And Justin told him that he believed that those who lived by the teachings of Jesus, those who believe in him would never die, but would live in heaven forever. Once this world had passed away, that they would live in a joyful afterlife with God forever. And Rusticus threatened him at this point and mocked his belief in, the, in heaven and said, If you are scourged and beheaded, do you believe that you will ascend into heaven? And Justin answered, I don't just suppose it, but I know it, and I am fully persuaded of it. And so Rusticus ordered him at this point, Approach and sacrifice to the gods. Unless you obey, you shall be mercilessly punished. See, so through the challenge out, Justin, you and your Christian friends need to leave behind this, this Christianity where you worship Jesus as the one true God and come and sacrifice to the gods of the Roman Empire. And Justin answered him, no one in his right mind gives up piety for impiety. And with this, Justin is basically saying, do you think I'm crazy? You think that after I found the one true God, that I would leave him behind in order to go back to the lies of the false gods that I used to worship? No one in his right mind would do that. I refuse. And so Rusticus passed sentence on him. He said, let those who have refused to sacrifice to the gods and to yield to the command of the emperor be scourged and led away to suffer the punishment of decapitation according to the laws. And so Justin and the other Christians on trial were led away and the sentence was carried out. He was brutally beaten before his executioners ended his life by cutting off his head. And Justin, who had spent his whole life searching for the truth, ended up giving his life after he had found it. Now, Justin was relentless in his pursuit of truth and seeking for truth. And when he found it, he was passionate about sharing that truth with others. And so just like Justin, many people today are seeking fulfillment in all these different philosophies and worldviews and spiritualities. They're searching for the truth. They're searching for the right way to live. Some think they found it through a kind of, of moral or virtuous atheism where they say to themselves, I don't need God to live a good life. I just need to practice mindfulness and, and be a good person to others and build up productive habits and, and live a healthy lifestyle that makes me feel good. And that's the answer. Others think that they found the truth in new age spirituality, thinking to themselves, I don't need God to be spiritual. I can tap into the life force within myself. I can tap into cosmic energy to experience power and transformation. And really, I can save myself by connecting to the spirit realm through meditation and crystals and charms. And they think that that's the answer. And there's so many different false religions. All these religions that worship gods or God other than the one true God of Christianity. And in many of these worldviews and philosophies, there are people that are seeking for truth, but others are not seeking for the truth. They're seeking for my truth. They're seeking for a life based on what they want to do and what they think is best. But there's no such thing as my truth. There is only the truth. There is one truth. And that truth is found only in faith in Jesus. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. There is not many paths to God. Christianity is not just one path amongst other equal paths to peace and truth. 
Jesus is the only way. He is the only one who can lead us to a relationship where we are at peace with God. He's the only one who teaches us the fullness of truth through his church. And that's what Justin discovered. That's what Justin discovered. He discovered that all the philosophies that he had tried, all of the the worldviews invented by men and the religions of this world, that they couldn't satisfy him. They didn't have the fullness of truth. They only had pieces. And that the only real life of faith and truth that he was looking for could be found in Jesus and his church. So let's pray to St. Justin Martyr that we would love the truth like he did and be able to proclaim the truth in a world that is so lost and confused. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, St. Justin, you were inspired by the countercultural way that Christians lived. You lived in a world where people exposed their children, lived in impurity, and yet Christians were fearless in the face of persecution and lived lives of purity and love for defenseless children. So help us as Christians in the culture we live in to live in such a way that our life shows the beauty of Jesus' teaching. That in a world where we no longer expose our children, but we abort them, or in a world that is just as much trapped in impurity and lust and confusion about sexuality as the Romans were, that we as Christians would be able to live a culture of life and a culture of dignity for the human person that would be a witness to those around us of the truth of our faith. Let us never be ashamed of Jesus' teaching, but proclaim it boldly in the midst of an unbelieving culture. St. Justin, you were relentless in seeking for the truth. And once you had found it, you refused to abandon it no matter the pressures put on you. We pray right now for all of those who are trapped in false beliefs. All of those who seem like they don't care about finding about the truth. All of those who say, I have my opinion, you have your opinion. Let them be filled with a desire for the truth. Let them earnestly seek it out. And let us be like that old man who met you, Justin, on the beach and helped you find the truth about God through careful questions and telling you about Jesus. Lord, show your grace to those who are searching for you so that all of us can find the truth in your church. St. Justin Martyr, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.